Hi, everybody. Kyla Newland from Mountain Pacific Quality Health. Welcome to our It's Worth a Shot this week. We're going to talk about some data correlation for vaccine and outbreaks and data story template. To start us off on the next slide, um, just our housekeeping items. Please um, put topics in the chat that you might want to see in um, additional sessions and also any questions you might have as we go through our presentation today. And we will continue to meet every Wednesday at this time. Next slide, please. I think we might be going to do the polling questions right now. Um, and I'll preface the conversation. Um, in addition to the immunization work we do at Mountain Pacific, we also have other areas of focus. And one of those is um, medication safety and opioid stewardship. So we wanted to find out um, specifically um, if you folks are working on that in your facilities and what additional needs um, you might have in that area. So we've got just a couple of polling questions related to that. Our first one, does your organization have a formal opioid stewardship program? And thank you everybody for responding to these. This is helpful for us as we move forward um, with educational opportunities and outreach. So I didn't hear if it was mentioned, but you did want a specific um, hone in on the nursing homes, correct? Yes, please. Um, if we're specifically, I guess, asking the nursing homes this question. So I know there's some folks on the call that are not um, actually nursing homes. So um, you don't have to answer if it doesn't apply to your setting. All right. So it's looking like there might be a need for maybe some education surrounding opioid stewardship programs. It looks like 70% uh, of folks said they don't have one in place. If we could go to the next question. So this is just, um, this is a select all that apply. Um, wondering um, areas that you might need additional assistance that we could potentially um, provide some education and outreach on in the future. And I, I can read them to locks on administration um, and training for staff, education on standard pain assessment tools, assessment of e-kit components, pharmacy support for diversion prevention, information on establishing a pain committee, and education on high risk med medications and reducing uh, adverse drug events. All right, it looks like a lot of folks are um, wanting education on high risk medications. Great information for us. Thank you so much for participating. I think we can go ahead and end that poll, Mary. Thank you. So on the next slide, um, we decided since, oh, yes, many thanks. Every week, many thanks. Our participation on these calls has been um, increasing as we go along and we really appreciate everyone's time uh, that they spend with us every week. And since flu season is um, approaching us here, we decided we will add an update every week on what the flu activity is, which I believe is on our next slide. So as we can see, even from, um, from last week, we're seeing this pretty rapid up, uptick in flu cases. So um, just a friendly reminder, get your flu shot, get everybody at your facilities a flu shot and get your family members vaccinated for flu this year. On the next slide, we did have some questions that I wanted to answer from last week. One of them was related to the um, pneumonia vaccine. And I pulled this um, little chart that gives a pretty good explanation of really what the recommendations are. If a patient has not had a previous pneumonia rec um, vaccine and they're recommended to get it, they only need to get the PCV20. But if they have previously had um, a pneumonia vaccine with the PPSV23, which is pneumovax, then they do need to wait at least a year and get the new formulations, which are PCV15 or PCV20. And this is for anybody that's on kind of that high-risk list, those old, older than 65, and then 
kind of a, a mixture of other folks that are um, indicated for a pneumonia vaccine. If they haven't gotten any pneumonia vaccine and they get the PCV15, they do also have to get the PPSV23 or Pneumovax one year later. So basically, if you can get the PCV20 and stock that, or if the patient can get that, it's kind of more of a one and done um, in the folks that need their pneumonia vaccine. So that's probably the easiest way to go. Next slide, please. So um, what if a person has not received any COVID-19 vaccines? Can they go ahead and just get the bivalent booster instead of the old formulations? And the answer is no. The bivalent boosters have not been uh, approved as the primary immunization series. So they must get the original primary series vaccine and then get their bivalent booster two months later. Next slide, please. If a staff or resident had COVID-19 less than three months ago, and it has been more than two months since their last booster, are they considered up to date? So if they have had it within the last 90 days, they are still considered up to date. And once they hit that 90 day mark, then that would be when they were indicated to get their bivalent booster to be considered up to date. Next slide, please. And then the last question um, came up last week about flu vaccines being preservative free. Most of the flu vaccines, 93% of the vaccines we're gonna see this year are um, preservative free or thimerosal free. Um, the only ones that are actually gonna have preservative are those multi-dose vials. Um, and uh, they still only have really a trace amount, but they still, um, do say that they're not technically 100% preservative free. And they have been proven to be safe as well. And I think that might be the last question. Okay, I'll go ahead and turn over to Jill to introduce our other topics. Thank you, Kyla. So I'm Jill Holt with Mountain Pacific, and most of you may know me from having worked with you or your colleagues on hotspot consultations for nursing homes. And during um, our in, in, during our hotspot consultation time, we came to note that when we talked about vaccines and vaccine uptake, especially with regards to the COVID vaccine, we learned that one of the hesitancies or barriers commonly expressed to us was a distrust in data or in government produced in particular data. Um, and sources that were commonly thought of as trustworthy in the past were being viewed by some as maybe not the case during this particular period of time. And so we also learned as we've marched through now two years plus with this pandemic that um, when we talked to leaders in nursing homes that were part of the nursing home before we had vaccine access and availability, and then now post access to vaccines for COVID, they tell a different story about the results and the impact. And though it's still very challenging and um, it's very difficult to work in an outbreak situation for a lot of reasons, and you could tell the story much better than I could because you're living it. But what we've, what we've noted is that it's, it seems to have, the vaccine has obviously given some relief. It's not the war zone. That's a word that was shared with us over and over again. It's not the war zone that it was prior to having access to a vaccine. And so um, what we were hoping is that we could create a tool for providers to consider using when they're having conversations about vaccine uptake. And rather than to rely upon distrusted, and I'm using air quotes, distrusted data, um, maybe it would be really cool if we could create a way for a facility or a nursing home to create their own data story, because that's that's something you can get your arms around. That is you. That is your story. That are, these are your people. Now, of course, we're not going to name names. We're not going to do things that identify people to the best of our ability. We just want to use a tool or have a platform for sharing what we think is is truly. Um, a remarkable journey with the vaccine. And we've seen um, the results of that over and over again. So what I'd like to do is introduce Liam Hedinger. He's a data analyst for Mountain Pacific. 
And he's been working on developing this template. And we decided also that we wouldn't roll this, roll this out in its final stages until we had a chance to um, display it to you and get your feedback. So this is an interactive conversation. We wanna hear from you what you think would be helpful with this tool before we put the final touches on it. So um, uh, weigh in on your thoughts. You can't hurt our feelings. This is something that should be for you and a tool that would be helpful. So um, lean in and let's see if this is something that you could consider using when you're working with your residents or family members or your staff regarding vaccine hesitancy and uptake. So Liam, take it away. Awesome, thank you for that introduction. Um, it's a pleasure being here. This is my first time at the It's Worth a Shot. So it's nice to see all y'all. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to talk about our data story template. Um, I don't know if I have the ability, I don't have the ability to screen share. So we'll just go through on the slides here and kind of talk about the different components that are in that data template. Um, so the data template is gonna be an Excel file um, that you can easily store on your own computer and save to your own computer. And so that way it's not you know out on the web or anything like that, it's locally saved data. Um, on your computer. And basically how the template will start out is it'll be a blank sheet. You are, you can fill in um, previous month's data and start building up the tables and building up information. But if you just want to start a clean slate, that's how the template will be distributed to you. The template will start out with this home landing page that you see here on the screen. Um, in the home landing page, um, there's going to be four boxes. There's the launch form box, which is hidden behind the form itself, um, kind of in the left. Um, two tabs on how to get to the different data dashboards that are developed within it, as well as a tab to see the raw data. So um, as you're going through your, your journey um, and you wanna track your COVID events, see how your residents are doing and your um, staff and faculty is doing, um, you, how you'll enter the data is click the launch form tab, which is that top left tab. This form that you can see in the center here is the form that'll pop up. So the way we've distinguishes it, distinguished it is between residents and non-residents and then vaccinated and unvaccinated. So those are kind of the two data points that you got to focus on while filling out this form. We fill out the number of residents you have, also the number of vaccinated residents, vaccinate or number of residents of the booster and then kind of the number of residents um, that got COVID have passed away or went to the hospital both for vaccinated and unvaccinated residents. You'll follow that same kind of format for healthcare professionals. Um, and this is how you'll start to acquire data and start to develop your data story. You can go to the next slide there. That data then will be aggregated kind of in the background, and you'll be able to fill out this awesome graphic here. Um, this is an infographic that created to really tell your data story, um, your COVID story in your individual nursing home. So as that sheet gets filled up, then we're gonna start to have occurrences of these things that are on the screen. So there's gonna be a date of the last positive test for an unvaccinated resident, the date of the last positive test for a vaccinated resident, and so on these will start to be populated within. As they're being populated, you can print that out every week and kind of have a um, infographic to really tell your COVID journey and how your nursing home is doing. Um, hopefully it'll be able to distinguish the difference between the effectiveness of the vaccine within your own nursing home and will prevent some of that distrust of outside data sources. There's also a couple more features within the dashboard that it will create outside of this infographic, which you can go onto the next screen, next slide. It'll create these two dashboards here um, as well that can really give you an idea of how you're doing over a period of time um, and how you're doing comparing to, um, in this case, Wyoming in general for this dashboard. Um, so what the way the dashboards work is on the left side here, this is going to be how your nursing home is doing. It's gonna be week by week. And as these people, you can kind of see there get filled in, that tells you how, um, what percentage your resident population or your healthcare professionals population um, is vaccinated or has a booster or has a second booster. On the right side here of that um, left image, um, 
is going to be how that compares to the rates that are on the CDC website. In this case, again, that is um, for Wyoming. Um, so that is comparing a Wyoming nursing home example to how they are doing compared to the 65 and older population in Wyoming. This great picture here um, is going to be another dashboard that is included in the um, COVID tracking dash or COVID tracking Excel file that we're distributing. Um, this is going to tell you different events that have happened over a time period. So in the bottom, the x-axis is going to be dates. Um, and then the bars will pop up, counting the number of occurrences of a certain event. The occurrences that they're counting are COVID positive tests, COVID hospitalizations, and those that have passed away from COVID. You have a tracker for your unvaccinated um, resident population, your vaccinated resident population, as well as unvaccinated and vaccinated staff population. Um, hopefully, this dashboard will give you kind of holistic picture of how your nursing home individually is doing um, and be able to make some comparisons and make some um, get, gather an idea of how your COVID story has been. Mm. You can go on the next slide. I think that's it for me. I guess I'll pass it to Tom for the data correlation for vaccine, vaccine and outbreaks, unless anybody has any questions or any uh, feedback on that template. OK. Um, well, I guess if questions come up, please, uh, please feel free to, to contact us, uh, Jill, Marcy, or whomever. And uh, we, again, appreciate your feedback on this tool. Liam's, Liam has put together a, a pretty cool product there. So I want to just take a few minutes and talk about uh, the data correlation between uh, vaccination status um, as it pertains to the likelihood of, of testing positive for COVID, hospitalizations and deaths related to COVID uh, and kind of look at so, some of that data as it pertains to uh, a couple of the outbreaks that we've had in the not so distant past. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, before we get too far into it, I just, uh, wanted to put this slide up. This is a quick snapshot taken from the CDC COVID tracker. Uh, as of last week for September, October time period, early October time period, uh, new cases, new admissions, new deaths, those averages are continue to trend downward, which is a uh, positive sign going forward. So uh, I try to keep track of that as we as we analyze data and look at data going forward. So next slide, please. So vaccination status as it pertains to testing positive for COVID or COVID cases. Um, this this graphic, you'll see the uh, peak right in the middle around January 2022. Uh, that is when the outbreak of Omicron reared its ugly head in earnest. And shortly thereafter, you can see in July, there was another smaller outbreak. I think that was the BA5 um, subvariant of Omicron, if I read correctly. But you can see here, uh, ages 50 and above, the unvaccinated uh, dash lines the incidence of uh, testing positive for COVID, COVID are greatly increased in the unvaccinated when you're comparing it to the uh, folks in those same age groups that have been vaccinated with just a primary series. Next slide, please. A uh, similar graphic here, not looking at age groups, but just the population in general. Uh, again, you have the, the, the outbreaks and you can see where the incidence for the unvaccinated testing positive for COVID is much higher for those that were vaccinated with a primary series only and those vaccinated with primary series and one plus booster dose. 
Next slide, please. So unvaccinated people aged six months and older uh, had a increased risk of testing positive for COVID and an increased risk of dying from COVID in July and August compared to people vaccinated with at least the primary series. And then in the blue, uh, looking at those folks compared to people vaccinated with a primary series and booster, again, an increase in the risk of testing positive and of dying of COVID. Next slide, please. Hospitalization as it uh, correlates with vaccination status. This, this uh, chart was very telling. The dotted line, kind of the greenish colored line, are those folks unvaccinated 65 years and older. And, you, and then below that you see kind of a reddish color line, people 50 to 64 years unvaccinated. The, the risk of being hospitalized, the incidence of being hospitalized unvaccinated during an outbreak uh, is greatly increased where you can see the vaccinated population and those numbers staying pretty flat and pretty close to the x-axis right down at the bottom. So another, another indicator that the vaccine does help uh, in lessening the severity and um, the, the risk of being hospitalized if you do get COVID. Next slide, please. In August, 2022, compared to people who are up to date with the vaccination, monthly rates of COVID-19 associated hospitalizations were 5.2 times higher in the unvaccinated adults age 18 and over. And here they broke it out in, uh, it's broken out in age groups. Uh, what, what I kind of have seen in, in putting this together is that age group 50 to 64 years. And it seems to me that that is an age group where uh, folks are kind of getting into that more uh, vulnerable age where uh, illness is more prevalent and the risk of illness is more prevalent, but still young enough to get out and uh, probably get exposed more to, to uh, things like COVID. Next slide, please. Uh, looking at the deaths and the uh, likelihood of dying from COVID if you're unvaccinated, again, uh, we're looking at the age group from 50 and above. And those 65 and over, uh, the incidence is a lot greater for th than, than those that are vaccinated. Uh, one exception, if you look down there, the uh, age group 80 and over actually have a higher incidence of, of death than the unvaccinated age group of 50 to 64. That I, I, you know, of course, when you get, as we get older, we're more vulnerable and uh, not as able to fight off the disease, but still the vaccination is important. Next slide, please. And similar, not looking at age groups. Again, the unvaccinated versus the vaccinated uh, uh, incidence of death greatly reduced with the vaccination and with the, with the primary series and the primary series with booster. So I, I'm sure the data is not showing most of you, at least most of you, um, anything surprising that the vaccine is effective in um, lessening the severity of the symptoms of COVID. Uh, we still hear, of course, the argument that, uh, well, you got vaccinated, you still got COVID. Yes, that's true. And that's true with most things we get vaccinated for. But uh, again, if you can avoid the severe symptoms, the hospitalizations and death, uh, the vaccine is effective. And I think that's all I had. Next slide, please. I think there was, yes. Uh, just one resource. 
uh, the COVID-19 data tracker. Uh, good resource if, if everybody is looking for more data similar to what was in this presentation. So thank you. Thanks, Tom. Um, does anybody have any questions about either one of the presentations? Or anything else for that matter? I have one thing, Miranda, I just saw come through um, that they just approved the bivalent booster for the pediatric population 5 to 11. So that's news as of today, and I can put the press release in the chat. Correct. Just FDA approved. CDC has to confirm. Thank you, Anna, for clarifying that. We go to the next slide, Mary. Okay, next slide. Hey, Miranda, it's Jesse. I just had a question for Liam. If we wanted to utilize that template, how would we access it? So I think the purpose right now, Joe is speaking a little bit to that, um, is just to get some insight and feedback and questions around that template. Um, it's really the goal is to design to, for the nursing home. So we want to make sure it's the most valuable resource for the nursing home. So I think once the feedback is heard and up, those updates have been made, then that's when we would be publishing it to the public. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay, next slide, Mary. All right, so we do have the um, evaluation in the chat at this point in time. So if somebody, if you can fill it out, we'd really appreciate it because we do value your feedback um, and want to let everybody know that we do have a, it's worth a shot next Wednesday on the 19th. And if there are no further questions, then we will go ahead and give you a couple minutes back in your day. But thank you everybody for participating today and we appreciate your attendance.